Hey guys, John here. This video is going to be, uh, I think, the last of the intermediate series, and what we're going to cover right now is namespaces. Now, from what we know already, namespaces are just libraries that allow you access to other bits of code. So for instance, the Unity API has a whole bunch of code uh, code libraries that we have access to. On trigger enter, void start, void update. Those are code libraries in using Unity Engine. The C Sharp libraries are the same thing. Now, what you can typically do is you can create your own libraries. Um, <clears throat> I rarely will ever create my own namespace libraries. I just don't see a reason to. I never have enough code that's reusable to, for me to use it. Uh, also, you don't really have to use a namespace. You can just create a static class and have helper functions that way. Uh, what I am going to do though is I'm going to show you how to create a namespace uh, library and then I'm going to show you also a better way of doing it through just a static class, which is what I probably would recommend doing. Uh, if someone knows why they wouldn't recommend doing that, feel free to comment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our namespace class. So namespace, here, so namespace example. So let's say we're creating Let's say we're creating a helper class, All right? So we're creating a helper class. We're going to delete everything in here. You can keep the two namespaces there. We might want to use the debug function from Unity Engine, or we might want to use something from the C Sharp library. So in order to create a namespace, you have to use the keyword namespace, All right? And you'll see here, this is the form namespace, and then you give it a name, and then you have a type declaration, All right? So we say namespace, and then Let's go ahead and just say helper. And it's just like a class. Now what goes in here is a class. So you say public class, and then what, what do we want this to do? Let's say we want a position class. So we're gonna say position. And inside here can go functions. Now these functions have to be uh, these functions have to be static so that you can access them from the other classes. Okay, there's no instance of this object anywhere. So and you can't create this object. So that means that we need to um, it's just a library that we're going to access, so it needs to be static so you can access it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, uh, let's say we have a position class that has a function in it to set our position to zero for us. So instead of saying transform.position equals vector 0 we'll have a helper class to do that for us. So what I can do here is I can say public static vector3, because I'm going to return a vector. So I'm going to say public static vector3, and let's go ahead and say set position to zero and it's going to return vector3.0. All right, and then here, let's also add in, uh, let's go ahead and say public static, I don't know, public static, let's say move up function. And make it void. I don't really know if we can do much with void, actually. Eh, we're just going to keep it at one for now. All right, so here we have public class position, and then here is our static function that's going to set the position to zero. So how do we use this? Well, let's hop into our player class. So give me one second here, we have an error. All oh, right, okay, so I need to return vector 3.0, right? It's a custom type function. So return vector 3.0 should be good. And let's go and open up our player class. Should, do I have one on the cube? I do, okay, my player. All right, now what we're going to do here is uh, we need to access that library. So the namespace is called helper. So we need to create a new library or access that library. So we're going to say using helper. Now what that's going to allow us to do is directly type set position zero and then that's it. Or set, I'm sorry, say position and then set position to zero. So here's how we use it. We have that helper namespace. And what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to come over to here now, and we are going to basically say in void start, what do we want to happen? We want to say transform.position equals our helper. Now, if I didn't have this namespace here, I could still access my namespace by typing helper.position and then dot set position to zero. And that will work. If we go ahead and test this out, All right, I got an error here. Oh, it's a function. Got to initialize it. Let's go and test it out. So if we run this, you'll see here the cube gets set to 000. Now to reduce the code length, this is the namespace. I can just say here, using helper, 
and now I have direct access to that library. I can literally just type here. I can say position uh, and then dot set position to zero. And that's going to work as well. So that's pretty much what a library is. It just it's just a code, it's basically just a, a code bundle. Um, you access the library and you have access to different functions. Now with this, you can also extend more libraries. So for instance, uh, we can have here, we have the whole transform class, right? So transform dot. If I wanted to, I could even add stuff into here um, through uh, extending these methods. Uh, and now that's getting a little bit more advanced, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm also going to show you a better way for a helper class. Unless you have a huge library of codes, I really wouldn't recommend using a namespace. Instead, you can just create a static helper class or like a utilities class. Um, so if I were to do this from scratch, what I would do here is I'm going to head over here, create a new C Sharp script, and I'm going to go in and create a, uh, I'm going to name it utilities. All right, so it's going to be a utilities class that's going to have helper functions. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it a static class. So it's a public static class utilities. doesn't inherit anything. It can't inherit anything. It's static. I don't need any of these. These are useless. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have, um, I'm going to extend, I'm going to have a, a helper function for my, for my setting the position to zero. So I'm going to say here, public vector three. Whoops, sorry. These all have to be static, by the way, so you can access them. Uh, public static uh, public static vector 3 and then we're going to say set position to 0 all right we're also going to return vector 3.0 all right and then what if i wanted to actually add this to the transform uh, transform class how could i do that so what I can do here, let me just make sure that's going to work first. Um, let's go into our cube here. All right, so to make sure that's going to work, now what I can do is I can get rid of this helper class. I don't need that namespace. And now all I have to do is I have to type utilities, which is the static class. So utilities dot, and then there you go, set position to zero. So it's the exact same thing, really. In my opinion, a static class is better. All right, so let's go ahead and just test it out, make sure everything's good. Go ahead and run it, and it sets you to zero. Good. Okay, so let's extend that. Let's go ahead and make, um, let's go ahead and make a custom, let's extend the transform class to have it in there. So how can I do that? Uh, the way we do that is we just have to create a function for it. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, um, let's go ahead and say here, public static void, and then we'll say set position. And then we'll set it to zero. So I'm going to say public stack void. Now here's the pro. Here's the part that's a little complicated with extension methods. You have to use the keyword this, and you got to say what you're basically saying. What um, what are you extending? We're going to say this transform, and then you can say like the variable of the transform you're manipulating. So you would say like trans. Okay. So this function is going to be a part of the transform uh, class and you're going to manipulate the transform, okay? Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to say here, we're going to say trans.x equals zero, trans.y equals zero, and trans.z equals zero. And that should be good. So we're going to say here, set position, and the trans, and let's see here. So if we head on over to here, we should be able to just say, and we should see that function actually, we should be able to say here, uh, transform.position equals transform dot. Oh, you know what? Oh, wait, actually that's it. Here, look at that, set position, extension method from utilities. So we can just call that function, and it should set us to zero. And see what's the error. Uh, okay, void to vector 3. Uh, okay, right, that makes sense. Okay, it needs to be a vector 3. So we're going to go in here, we're going to say, and actually, I wonder if I could do this. Return trans. But I think it has to be our uh, vector 3 here. We're about to find out. It does. Okay. Yeah, it does. Alrighty. That's not a problem. So go ahead and make this a vector 3. Set position. 
right, let's go ahead and test that out. Oh, wow, it doesn't like that at all. <laughs> all right, let's see here. It says, uh, what's it say? What's the error? All right, it says unityengine.transform does not contain a definition for x and no extension method of x of type unityengine.transform could be found. Are you missing or using a directive or assembly reference? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> transform.position.x. All right, you still have to use the hierarchy process. Um, so on a game object, you have the transform component, which is this, the trans, and then you have to access the position. So I can't say transform.x, I have to say transform.position.x, so dot .y, and then transform.position.z. And now that should be okay. Let's see. Now what does it not like? Let's see. What's it say? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> this is a C-sharp thing. So right now it's telling me, consider storing the value in a temporary variable. It doesn't like that I'm just setting these individually. So what I actually need to do is I need to say here, trans.position equals a new vector 3. And I'm going to go ahead and say 0. Actually, I can just say here, trans.position equals vector 3.0. And that will fix that. And then I'm going to return... Um, I think I can return trans.position. Alrighty, there we go. So you got to watch me debug that. Hope that was beneficial. <laughs> and as you can see here, it sets it to zero. So like I said, guys, you can use namespaces. Uh, it's pretty cool to be able to create them and know how, how they work. But at the same time, I think a, utilities static, a, a static utilities class is better than... Uh, a namespace but whatever it's your preference yeah so thanks for watching guys um, this is going to be the last series for the um, for the intermediate the practical is going to be coming up soon and uh, yeah thanks for watching make sure you guys uh, are subscribed to my channel make sure you guys are following me on Facebook and Twitter digitalgaminginstitute.com my books release go pick up a copy of that and uh, yeah I'll see you guys soon